to touch on a few things that Bandy talked about as far as why um, people rise to power, uh, as well as touch on some of the destructive uh, potential that Putin may have, and then also uh, touch on um, what Steve mentioned as far as the, uh, the binary framing of, uh, of issues in the world, the black and white type of thinking. Um, I think you know, initially one of the reasons why um, somebody like Trump comes to power is that uh, we, you know, we often tend to try to, uh, well, sociopathy is so foreign to most people that it's difficult for uh, us to try to, uh, to understand uh, the behavior and the motivations. We're constantly trying to um, uh, interpret their behavior or view them through this you know, normal lens or filter of, of normal human nature. And what that basically you know, causes is that there's this failure of imagination to anticipate or understand the sociopath's behavior because, it, because it's so outside of, of, of the range of behavior that we you know that we understand and that we uh, how and how we operate. And what it basically causes is that it, it continues to allow the, the sociopath to exploit vulnerabilities and leaves everyone else confused and trying to figure out what just happened and why. Um, something else you know I want to I want to talk about is a uh, is, is a gaslighting tech, uh, tactic. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I think a lot of people have gravitated to my work is because I've basically articulated some of their uh, experiences they've had in their personal lives with whether it's a family member, um, a spouse, you know, somebody who has had a personality disorder. And um, some of my own observations and experiences, it's, it's something that I've described as the manipulation of the interaction timeline. And uh, the manipulation of the interaction timeline occurs when a narcissist distorts a sequence of events or more specifically distorts the timeline of that interaction. In this context, the sequence of events begins with an egregious action by the narcissist that causes healthy and functional people to react in a rational, humane, and sane way. The narcissist or the sociopath will manipulate the timeline of events by dismissing or ignoring their own initial egregious actions and then characterizing the rational reactions to the narcissist's behavior as an unprovoked act rather than as a reaction. This gaslighting technique is not only an attempt by the narcissist to dismiss and avoid accountability, for their initial egregious behavior, but it's also an attempt to cling to a delusional concept of unfairness and to embrace victimhood by claiming that they're being attacked without provocation. Um, documentary filmmaker Albert Mazelis once described tyranny as the, the deliberate removal of nuance. And coincidentally, tyranny is often the inevitable destination of narcissism and sociopathy with the deliberate, deliberate removal of nuance providing the vehicle. This dynamic has been on display over the last several years because as we have repeatedly seen throughout the world and especially in American politics, nearly every issue is framed in binary zero sum terms. If something doesn't go 100% in the narcissist's favor, they claim they're being treated unfairly. This is because narcissists are pathologically subjective, meaning that they can only see the world through their own limited perspective and believe they deserve 100% of the proverbial pie or 100% of the transaction and anything less than 100% is then viewed through the lens of unfairness. Unsurprisingly, dictators and wannabe dictators covet and demand 100% power, 100% of the authority, and 100% loyalty. Narcissists also claim injustice when they lose because their pathological sense of grandiosity combined with a hyper-fragile ego precludes them from being able to accept being beaten fairly or by a better man or woman. As previously mentioned, the absence of nuance results in life being defined in binary terms such as winners and losers. In this binary frame context, you're either win or you're a loser. When life is framed in this way, it has the effect of removing the emphasis from the process of winning, which can be defined as an affirmative merit-based action, and instead puts the emphasis solely on the avoidance of loss. Essentially, you don't win by actually winning, you win if you avoid losing. This mindset not only justifies every tactic or behavior, but it expands the definition of winning to include anything that avoids losing, including deceit, betrayal, criminality, and even inhumanity. Therefore, in the sociopath's mind, they only lose if they fail to avoid losing. This creates a pathological belief or value system where the only limits to winning are those that they place on their willingness to lie, cheat, and steal. In this pathological context, winning is synonymous with lying, cheating, and stealing. And when viewed through this lens, Trump's early statements of there's going to be so much winning and you're going to be sick and tired of the winning were revealed as not only being cryptic projective confessions, but as seen with Trump's attempt to extort Ukrainian President Zelensky and as seen with Trump's lies about the 2020 election, it was also a predictive window that revealed Trump was capable of doing anything to avoid a loss. 
When reality threatens a narcissist or a sociopath self-concept, it may cause them to feel weak and inadequate, which they then attempt to alleviate by creating alternate realities and revisionist histories or by attempting to project strength. Unfortunately, sociopaths equate strength with cruelty and inhumanity, and this is exactly what we're seeing in Ukraine. As far as Putin, I think it's important to view Putin's psychological profile through the lens of the great man theory. The great man theory of leadership states that great leaders are born with exceptional attributes that set them apart from others, and that these traits are responsible for them assuming positions of power and authority. According to the great man theory, a leader is a hero who accomplishes goals against all odds for his followers, and that the history of the world is but a biography of these great men. With that as a backdrop, if Putin saw the collapse of the Soviet Union as the greatest ge geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century and viewed himself as the great man to rectify that catastrophe, then it is unlikely that his psyche will be able to handle not just the failure of rectifying that catastrophe, but the reality that he destroyed Russia and made it exponentially worse than it was after the fall of the Soviet Union. If this is the eventual outcome of the war, the natural death may be irrelevant compared to the death of Putin's ego. Similar to the Kims in North Korea, sociopathic and narcissistic, narcissistic authoritarians project the manufactured mythical aura of greatness and, and omnipotence. Putin does this to the point of staging fake hockey games against former professional hockey players, where a 60-something-year-old Putin dominates by scoring eight of his team's 13 goals, and of course, he wins. Putin has a pathological need or impulse to avoid the shame and the hum humiliation of the loss and to avoid the piercing of his grandiosity, to avoid the piercing and the fallacy of his brilliance and decision making, and to avoid the piercing of the perception of his strength, which, as I pointed out earlier, is viewed synonymously with cruelty and inhumanity. The decades long existence of alternate realities combined with a pathologically fragile ego and nearly unchallenged authority create a very dangerous situation when that alternate reality is pierced. If actual reality prevents Putin from having the ability to create or impose alternate realities, he may view a Jim Jones-like murder-suicide as the ultimate alternate reality. This is because anyone he kills won't be around to ruminate in the actual reality of his infamy. 